Hi, and uh, welcome back to my channel. So in this episode, I would like to talk about my Spectrum Analyzer, the HP 8591E. Um, this is my first uh, Spectrum Analyzer. I bought it, uh, uh, of course, on the second-hand market uh, because I really wanted to learn uh, and experiment a little bit uh, with RF, and I think a Spectrum Analyzer is a very uh, good tool about it. Anyway, this is, uh, as you can imagine, a very complex uh, machine, and so I'm still learning. But uh, today I would like to talk to you about some uh, features that are not, uh, you know, the, the most obvious you have, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, spectrum analyzers. And um, these features are, um, uh, I mean, are, are associated with uh, what is available on the on the back of the instrument okay so uh, on, the b on the back of the instrument there are some uh, bnc ports that uh, emit some uh, signals and some of these signals are uh, the topic of this video um, yeah so perhaps the first uh, signal i would like to talk about is this uh, monitor output okay so this monitor output emits uh, a composite signal and uh, the result you can see here uh, basically, um, it's something you can configure uh, going here, so in the configuration uh, uh, menu of the Spectrum Analyzer. And here you can choose what kind of signal you want to emit. At the moment, as you can see, I'm emitting this NTSC uh, composite format, which is popular in the United States. You can also choose the PAL format, which is popular, was, uh, I should say, more popular in Europe. Anyway, this signal is going to the back of my computer. Uh, it reaches a very cheap 10 euros or something uh, USB dongle. And from that I can uh, get uh, the image, the output of the monitor, the spectrum analyzer in my computer. So I think this is a, a, an interesting feature. Uh, a couple of people uh, on this channel asked me about it, so this is the full answer. Uh, anyway, um, as you can see, the many ports that you have on the output really, um, I think, reflect the fact that this uh, type of instrument were made, uh, you know, um, first things to last and second thing to be, um, you know, interconnected with other devices. Um, the other things I want to talk about today are this sweep output and the uh, auxiliary video output. And so today in this video, I'm going to talk about those. And in another video, in another video, we'll talk uh, about another very interesting uh, port, which is called the uh, IF output. So uh, let me start with the sweep output. Uh, the sweep output port is at the moment connected uh, to channel one um, of the, um, so let me disable, this is a kind of distracting, so let me disable this. Uh, the um, sweep uh, output port is at the moment connected to the uh, first uh, input port of my oscilloscope. This is uh, just a, a basic uh, 20 MHz analog oscilloscope. Okay, and so let me show you what, uh, what happens on uh, channel 1. At the moment it's reading ground, so at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to uh, activate it uh, with the C-coupled. And um, as you can see, uh, let me reduce a bit uh, here. Um, what we get is a DC level which is proportional to the sweeping point of uh, the spectrum analyzer. So the spectrum analyzer is sweeping uh, uh, the frequencies uh, from left to right. At the moment it is taking three seconds to do the entire sweep. And here we can see um, the output emitted on this port is proportional to the sweeping point. It goes from 0 volts to 10 volts when the sweeping is, uh, is over. At the moment we have uh, two volts per division and indeed it it's taking exactly five divisions to complete the sweep. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what uh, this uh, sweep output does. And um, on the second port of the oscilloscope I have this uh, other uh, port called uh, the um, auxiliary video output. And so let me show you what it does. So again, let me disable channel 1 and just going to channel 2 at the moment it's ground so at the bon uh, bottom and uh, let me activate it with this a coupled and, uh, and so here we get a signal that as you can see is proportional to the magnitude the power of the frequency being measured at that point uh, uh, during the sweep process okay so um, as you can see we have these big jumps uh, uh, when uh, there are corresponding jumps in the spectrum analyzer okay 
So in fact, if I reduce a little bit, so let me activate uh, the video bandwidth and let me reduce it, uh, let's say to 30 Hertz uh, here. So this is going to reduce this, uh, the, um, the t I mean, to increase the time of the sweep. Now it's 10 seconds instead of three. And so you can see with more calm uh, that, uh, yeah, indeed uh, the output uh, of that port is proportional to the power being measured, okay? So what is nice here is that you can uh, use both of these uh, outputs. In uh, my oscilloscope, I have an XY port uh, that allows basically to see these two things um, together. So let me see if I can uh, show this kind of nicely. So let me see. Uh, basically, the signal starts here. And as you can see, we have uh, exactly, uh, let me, OK. So right, I just configure the settings of the oscilloscope to show the, the signal. Precisely, let me decrease uh, uh, the amplitude of uh, channel 2 for a second. And let's see the sweep once again. So basically, we can see in the oscilloscope exactly what we see on, um, on the spectrum analyzer again. So not just it's not just possible to output uh, this on a monitor, but also on an oscilloscope uh, using, uh, using this feature, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, I want you to show something that I don't know what it is. Uh, in the instant at the end of the sweep, uh, you will see something on the oscilloscope. Uh, did you see? There was this uh, glitch or something. It's not uh, very easy to, to spot, but uh, um, want, let's see if we can see it again. There, there it was, just for, uh, for a second or a millisecond or something. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, um, Anyway, please, uh, so the, the, what, what happens in reality is that uh, the spectrum analyzer uh, is doing this sweep uh, and then it's sweeping something else. I'm not sure exactly what is measuring, but that uh, something else only takes a millisecond or something. And then uh, we start with another sweep. Right. So, um, yeah, let me move on. And at the moment, uh, what you see on, on, on the spectrum analyzer here is this signal emitted by, by my signal generator, this Siglent SDG1032X. And uh, the signal is at uh, 7.075 megahertz, which, which is the center frequency uh, that you can uh, see here. Um, right, if I change the settings of my uh, spectrum analyzer here, let me say, for example, I'm going to put a frequency of 900 megahertz. So let's go away from this signal. So of course the signal is going down, but let me put also a span of 1.8 gigahertz. So, which is the maximum for this. Uh, uh, yeah, let me reactivate here the auto settings for the video bandwidth. Right, so you can see now that on the oscilloscope, uh, we basically have the, the readout of the, of the spectrum analyzer in the form uh, that you would see in uh, older scopes or analog scopes, right? So, um, yeah, it's pretty nice. And if I zoom in, for example, uh, um, let's say I go to a frequency, let's say 20 megahertz with a span of, let's say, 30 megahertz. So we can see uh, again that we have our signal coming from the signal uh, generator at around 7 megahertz. And there it, uh, and there it is, okay? So basically, these two ports allow us to, to use, uh, you know, to, to, to have this analog view of the spectrum analyzer. And sometimes this analog view can, uh, can show us uh, more than what is visible here. So let me try to, to give you an example. Um, suppose I go back again to our center frequency of uh, 7.075 megahertz, okay, and with a span of 10 kilohertz. Uh, so again, the frequency is, sorry, 7.075 megahertz, okay? So here we have our signal. It's, uh, the moment is a uh, AM modulated signal. It's a uh, one kilohertz uh, sinusoidal being modulated at this, uh, at this uh, center frequency. And so this is the typical shape that you have of uh, an AM uh, modulated signal. So this is the um, upper sideband, the lower sideband, and the carrier, okay? And, um, right, so something uh, that I could do, instead of having 10 kilohertz uh, 
span, which is the, the setting that we have at the moment on uh, Spectrum Analyzer, I can set zero span, okay? So let me do that, um, right. So what we have uh, at the moment uh, in zero span is uh, the Spectrum Analyzer being uh, constantly looking at this frequency, 7.025 MHz, uh, using uh, uh, and looking at that frequency with a 100 Hertz uh, uh, filter, okay? Uh, the results that you can see here is the measurement of the power over time. So now on the x-axis of the, of the spectrum analyzer, we have time, not frequencies anymore. And, um, and this is uh, the output that we see. Um, right, so let me see what happens if I increase a little bit uh, the, the bandwidth, so the size of this filter. And at the moment is uh, 100 Hertz, as you can see here. There. Let me put uh, 5 kilohertz, for example, right? So this is an example of what I, wa I was talking about. We can see more on the oscilloscope than we have on the spectrum analyzer. On the spectrum analyzer, we have this constant uh, uh, power. Instead, here we get uh, something more. We, we see that the power is actually moving up and down, okay? So it's, uh, it's this segment. It's not uh, a line. And at the end, what you see, just for one instant, uh, is this um, thing that we see at the end, this glitch, is again uh, what happens af after, after the sweep. Is, uh, as I said before, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, we're going to have a strong clue about what it is in a second. Anyway, um, if I now just look at uh, uh, channel um, 2, which is what I'm, I'm doing, uh, uh, sorry, let me... Now, at the moment, I'm uh, not anymore in XY mode, I'm looking only at channel 2. So let me increase the size of channel 2 and a little bit more. Uh, okay, like this. So it's there. And let me see more detail over time what this signal is. Ah, okay, so you see now we have uh, something. Let me try to uh, trigger it properly. Let's see if I can manage. Unfortunately, on this scope, uh, yeah, okay. There we go. Uh, on this scope, I was saying we don't have any um, trigger line uh, indicator. But anyway, so uh, here we are getting this curve, okay? And um, so, of course, this is the um, one killer signal being modulated uh, by um, around uh, this carrier frequency of 7.075 uh, of, uh, and something megahertz. Um, it doesn't look uh, quite... Uh, um, so let me see if I can. It doesn't look very sinusoidal. You see, it looks kind of deformed. But it is because at the moment the, um, the spectrum analyzer is measuring power, okay? And expressing it in a logarithmic, so in dBs, so which is uh, basically the logarithm of the power. Instead, if I um, modify this, uh, so where is it? Amplitude scale. I modify the scale from logarithmic to linear. So let me do that. Um, we should see, uh, so uh, let me see what happened there. Okay, there it is. Um, so here we have our perfect sinusoidal function. Okay, so we, we are viewing basically this one kilohertz uh, signal uh, being modulated. Uh, so this one kilohertz is really the up and downs of the carrier, right? So this is the meaning of uh, amplitude modulation. The carrier is being... Uh, um, modulate in amplitude and it's going up and down and this is the power of the carrier that we are looking in uh, zero span at uh, center at 7.075 megahertz and it's going up and down um, and we can see uh, we, we can see this uh, this signal if uh, let me try this i'm not sure what's going to be the result but i'm now taking uh, this uh, this thing so this uh, sinusoidal function that we are looking at the moment and putting it uh, into this uh, uh, frequency. Uh, I'm not sure if the cable, well, the cable is too short, unfortunately. So let me see, but okay, we managed. So let me see what it give us. So we are reading exactly, oh, you cannot see, but uh, um, you can, we are reading exactly uh, one kilohertz, okay? 
So uh, the, the signal that we get is exactly one kilohertz, which is what we were visualizing before on the scope. Of course, if you have a digital oscilloscope, you can have all these measurements made for you directly, which is kind of convenient. And, uh, so yeah, um, right. Um, what can I say here? Um, yeah, that's it. Basically, of course, I can uh, play around with uh, the, with um, spectrum analyzer to increase or decrease the output there, um, as you can see. Um, uh, and that's basically it. So this uh, video basically illustrated the functionalities that we have uh, here on this port, the sweep output and the auxiliary video output. And I think it's, um, it's pretty cool uh, to have something like this. So essentially speaking, we can tune uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer on any frequency and observe, uh, and observe it uh, as a, basically as we would in a normal oscilloscope uh, uh, using these uh, functionalities. And sometimes, as illustrated before, you get more information with an analog oscilloscope because it has a super fast uh, refresh rate. Whereas here, instead, uh, we are getting this uh, digital uh, readout. And um, yeah, um, I think anyway, we should be able to get uh, uh, this readout also here. So let me try to show you uh, how this is done. So I have to set up the trigger basically. Uh, so let me have a look uh, at the trigger, for example. No. Mm -hmm. So free run. Why is not uh, showing me? Oh yeah. So at the moment that uh, okay. Basically, my goal was uh, um, to have this type of readout also on the spectrum analyzer. Of course, it is possible. But the fact is that at the moment, uh, this uh, sweep is of uh, three seconds. So um, really, we, we get uh, this, uh, this type of uh, information in the spectrum analyzer, but it, the, the sweep is too slow. And so it's, uh, it's as if uh, I was doing you know, this on, uh, on, uh, on the oscilloscope. As you can see, we lose uh, sight of the sinusoidal function. Um, so um, yeah. So let me change the sweep time, and the moment is set, as you can see. Um, uh, let me see. As you can see here, the moment is uh, set to uh, to three seconds. Uh, let me set it, uh, for example, to I don't know, uh, zero point zero one seconds. So ten milliseconds. Where is second here? And uh, there it is. Okay. So we are now visualizing the same information with uh, this, um, with this uh, directly with the spectrum analyzer. And uh, if I go to trigger, where is it? Um, trigger here, I can choose uh, the precise point where to trigger, for example, here. And then we get also stable, uh, stable information. Okay, as we did already add, uh, with uh, the oscilloscope. I frankly much prefer to view this information on the oscilloscope rather than uh, than, uh, than um, the spectrum analyzer. In general, I prefer you know the type of view that you have on uh, analog uh, displays rather than digitals. But anyway, that's a, a matter of course of uh, of preference. Um, anyway, yeah, this is the functionality I wanted to illustrate in this video. And uh, in the next video, I will try to discuss this other very cool uh, functionality, the AF output. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.